So welcome back. Paul Stumpo here, Basics to Wellness. I want to do a follow-up to my video that I just posted on philosophy and social concepts and social order, where I was talking about our languaging and sending out a message to the African-American community. And I just wanted to follow up that video with this mechanism uh, in which I was, in, you know, it allowed me to adjust my thinking. Right, and it's around this term African American, and we can apply this to um, anything or anytime somebody comes along with um, an action or a, a statement that perhaps makes us fall back and and reject and not want to be a part of. And so, as I said in the other video, yes, this term African American, you know, came through a PC culture pc channel that said here's what you know we're supposed to you know use this term to identify folks that came from africa and, and their lineage was african and everyone that we're you know that we address that has that skin color should be uh, called african-american now my first response to that as i said in the other video was to reject it so i'm not going for that pc bs i'm going to say they're black because they are it's how I put it. Until I began to allow my thinking to transform, right, and the first step of that was to recognize that even though that person over there might be saying we're supposed to use African American or whatever term that you might think of, whatever form of PC speech that they are promoting, that the first step now that I take is I try to listen behind what the person is saying. Like where is the energy source or the impulse coming from. I maybe understand their own perspective of why they're trying to say it. You know, the PC crowd wants to control how people are are talking and so it's a control mechanism for them. You know, how can I control you by mandating you say it like this or call you a racist or any other term that they want to come up with to call another individual to use as a control mechanization. And I totally get that. But what I'm trying to say is behind that person saying that lives an impulse and a direction. And it comes out of the spiritual world. And if I can still my mind and not judge what the person's saying like I was just doing, and can actually walk around it and take a closer look at it, I could perhaps pick up something that I didn't see there before. Like the impulse to transform how one defines themselves right so this is kind of where it began for me how how what do i how do i say who do i say that i am um and so again calling somebody calling themselves a black man or a black woman right identifying the true essential state as a shade or a color is in error and so is calling someone saying I'm an African American, but it's a step. I saw it as a transformative step to allow the current prevailing thinking that somebody has about themselves or other people have about that group of people to begin to be transformed. So it kind of shakes things loose, so to speak. And so from that time on, so when I began to recognize that this was an actual opportunity to begin to drop or loose or shed three-dimensional concepts about myself and others, that I began to use that term and say African American. Now, my true vision, say like for you, Candace Owens, if you managed to find this video and you're wondering about it, I don't see you as a black person, right? I, I uh certainly the first time i look at you i see that you have that skin tone i may identify immediately as an african-american or as a black person and as a woman and the, the next moment though as i release myself from looking with those eyes is begin to see the true essential nature of the individual and who they really are which is not defined by their experiences including their genealogical line in which they have incarnated. 
So that's not to say in any way, shape, or form that our gene genealogy or the race that we're in has no merit. Not at all. It has great merit, in fact. And um, But it doesn't define the experience of coming in as that genealogy or as that race or in that familial line does not define who that person is, who that individuality is. And that is a much broader um, discussion to define who a particular individuality is. And I'm not going to go into my concepts around all that here today. Um, but just wanted to do a follow-up video that began to look at this mechanism. We see it elsewhere, right? Remember Nancy Pelosi saying, uh, objecting to Donald Trump calling the M13 gang men members animals? And saying, no one should be called animals. Well, here's that PC voice again, right? Wanting to create political terms. Maybe on both sides, right? Calling them animals could be a political stunt. I don't, I don't know what was in Donald Trump's heart, but certainly um, objecting to the phrase because we understood what he was trying to kind of say by calling these M13 gang members animals. Um, but to, to, to say, to object to it because it wasn't politically correct, again, was that political correct voice. Right, that wants to define how people talk and control how people talk and say this is wrong and this is right in our speech. Um, and again, if we allow ourselves to look behind and what's the impulse behind that and really kind of begin to take that in. So I have some questions. And maybe I shouldn't even answer or try to answer it. These are just questions around this. So M13 gang members, do they act like animals? Do you see uh, animals in nature acting like M13 gang members? Yeah, as a, in a strict biological sense, um, we are classified as mammals, right? People in these types of physical bodies are classified as mammals, and therefore we are a type of animal, right? Inside the great category of, of biology, right? And so um perhaps perhaps the reason for the objection was that we weren't actually properly declaring what is going on that would allow an M13 gang member act in the way that they do. Because I think if you go look at it, you will find there's no corollary to this in what we call the animal kingdom. It does not act like how they act. And so you have to find different words that are actually accurate to define how they're acting. And um, so perhaps, you know, if I've stimulated anybody's thoughts around this, instead of providing you what I think is an accurate description of uh, a wording that could have been used for these M13 gang members, instead of calling them animals. So ask yourself some questions. Can you find this type of behavior in the animal kingdom, you know, where they, you know, so what do they do? They, they, they tortured people and mutilated them and, you know, they'll gang rape them. I don't think you find that in the animal kingdom like that. In fact, you know, I watch animal videos all the time, nature videos all the time. I know lions go out and hunt down the elk that are running around out there. And, or you know, uh, gazelles, I should probably say, or things of this nature, zebras, whatnot. But yet when they're done eating and those same herds of animals are there, they're all just sitting there looking at them. They they don't go and grab a hold of one of them who are at actually a different, you know, classification of animal. It's not the same animal, right? So it's not quite the same. You know, MS-13 gang members are supposedly doing this to other humans. So you'd have to find lions that hunt down other lions and gang rape them and mutilate them and dismember them, it, it, you know, for other purposes other than eating, which they don't typically eat themselves. They don't eat their own kind. Um, so, I mean, that's why an animal, you know, kills and, and dismembers a, another animal is they're hungry. And we do it the same way, you know, we, we have lots of cows and we kill those cows and we think we're doing it humanely 
you know, there remains to be a question whether or not who's more humane, the lion that's taking down the zebra or uh, us humans that are killing all those cows in the way that we do or any of the other animals that we mass slaughter so that we can eat them just like the lions do. So, again, this isn't so programmatic that we're talking about, you know, the animal kingdom. It's the languaging again and the objection to the wording. And we can get hung up on the surface level of, oh, that's PC bullcrap. And it is PC bullcrap on that layer. If we stay just on that layer and not allow ourselves in our consciousness to transcend and understand that there are spiritual forces in the world. Yeah, I know. It's a hard concept. And that um, if we're not paying attention and we're not looking behind what somebody is saying and what is really there, that we'll miss it and we'll miss a guidance, we'll miss direction that's coming to help us. Anyways, put your comments below if you've been able to find anybody in the animal kingdom that acts like that uh, and any other questions or uh, and comments about my videos in general. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.